Okay, so having made your garden and having washed your garden, the question now is what to do with it. Uh, well, what most people want to do with it is reduce it almost immediately back to graphene so that they can use it. And there's lots and lots of ways of reducing it back to graphene. And some of them are fairly um, hazardous, like uh, using hydrazine, for instance. Hydrazine is a rocket fuel, but uh, is also a very good um, agent for reducing graphene oxide back to graphene. But it's extremely dangerous and it's a restricted substance, so unless you're a lab, you're not going to be able to do it. And uh, you can use other reducing agents, so uh, sodium borohydrate, for instance, which again is another really um, hideous uh, reagent. But there are actually quite a few green methods to do, and we did one using ascorbic acid. Um, this one is called reduction by nascent hydrogen, and it's a really simple method, and you can do it with stuff you've just got lying around. Now, the idea of nascent hydrogen is that the hydrogen is hiding around in there, waiting to come out, and you do a reaction that brings the hydrogen out, and the hydrogen will react with the go and turn the go into graphene. Now, this nascent hydrogen, according to the research, is uh, particularly reactive uh, just when it's just formed and it ceases its uh, reactivity very, very quickly. So what we've got here is a solution of graphene oxide and it's actually quite a golden brown, but in this light it's quite difficult to tell. And it's a one milligram per uh, milliliter solution. Now I know that because I, I weighed the dried graphene that we did and mixed it up to a known volume and I made a 10 milligram per milliliter, a four milligram per milliliter, and I stuck some four milligram per milliliter and um, took it up to 100 mils. So we've got a one milligram per milliliter uh, go solution in there. And all you do is get a bit of ordinary kitchen foil and just chuck your kitchen foil in. Now, there's no real weight or measure for this because this foil is going to be reacting and when the reaction has finished, there'll still be little bits of foil left over. And you just filter those little bits of foil back out again and that's how you get rid of it. So if you've got um, a bit too much foil in there, hey, hey, don't worry about it. If you have uh, not enough, then all the foil will dissolve and it'll still have a brownish colour. And um, you need to add a bit more foil. Now all we do to that, um, to get the reaction going, is add some hydrochloric acid. Now there's 100 millilitres in there, and what I have in here is a 10% hydrochloric acid solution that I made up earlier. I sound like I'm running a Blue Peter show. 10%, obviously you just get normal 35% and add enough deionized water to make it 10%. And you just add another 50 mils, say here, let's have a look. There we are. I'm going to find my milliliter mark. There we go. Another 50 mils of your hydrochloric acid and then give it a stir around. Now all you have to do with that, as that reaction gets going, obviously I'll stir it a bit better with a glass rod, is um, leave it for about half an hour to an hour, and you leave it on the top of a radiator, so about 35, 40 degrees, something like that. And the reaction takes about half an hour, an hour. You'll know when it's done, because it'll just gone black and be slightly clumpy together instead of the golden brown. Anyway, I'll leave that to work, and I'll get back to you. A little update on this reaction. It's been going about 15 minutes and you can see the hydrogen being nicely formed. That's why we're getting this froth. The um, graphene oxide gets lifted out, so you need to give a bit of a stir to get everything back in there again. And then just leave it until it's um, completed. Keep an eye on it and give it a little stir every now and then. Okay, so after half an hour, that's what you get. Um, you can see that the graphene oxide has been reduced back to this black graphene and most of it's floating at the top because of the hydrogen content. And if you look on the top, it's very silvery and graphite-like. And this material here is a greenish colour because that's um, aluminium chloride, basically. In order to remove the aluminium, I couldn't be bothered filtering it, so I put an excess of hydrochloric acid in there, so that's fairly acidic as well. And um, that's your graphene from your graphene oxide. Now, in order to clean that up, we can use the same method that we used to clean up the graphene oxide, that is, add it to a great deal of water and keep on uh, pouring it off after it's sedimented out until you get a neutral pH, and there you'll have your graphene. Now, uh, one of the things that I do with this stuff, incidentally, is I make this. 
this is a, a graphene ink. I'm still playing around with the concentrations of the various bits and pieces, but so far I've got this down to about 50 ohms per centimetre, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm still going to play with it because I want it down to about mm, 5 ohms per centimetre, something around about there. And when I've got it down to 5 ohms, I'm going to be pretty pleased with it. At the moment, I'm at 50 ohms, uh, and essentially I just take this and mix it with um, various binders and additives to make myself a uh, paintable ink. Uh, and that's where we are with it. So that's how to reduce graphene oxide back to graphene and something to do with it. Make yourself a conductive ink. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.